So I knew him, but he came up and I thought, man, that name really fits because he just had a really kind of calm aura about him. So I told him I was there to photograph uh, Biggie and he pointed him out, which, uh, as, as I write, wasn't that necessary because he, he was like six foot four. He was a big guy in uh, every way. That, that was how the shoot started. We went out in the street. Um, he wasn't a big talkative guy. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was softly spoken, deep voice, but soft, quiet. So you have to kind of lean in a little bit, which um, always surprises people when I tell them that. BiggieSmallsKickstarter.com will, will, will redirect you right to the Kickstarter page. The idea is an exhibition. The idea is to have the prints printed big. But it's a little more than that. It's about, it's about like finding out if there's an audience before I even have the exhibition. I mean, this is, who's, who's interested in this? I, I visited a gallery, showed them the prints, and uh, they said, oh, I love your work, but there's not a lot of interest in Biggie. I profoundly disagree with that from what I, from people I speak to, um, people I've shown the work to. Walking down Fulton Street in Brooklyn the other day, handing out some flyers, speaking to kids, um, there's a huge amount of interest in Biggie. So, um, so what I've decided is, if the traditional art galleries aren't interested in showing this, then I got to do it myself. But I want to get Biggie fans involved now. So whether it's a dollar, five dollars, or buying like you know, a print this size for a couple of grand, it's it's really about establishing okay. the community for the exhibition first. So. Partly it's like I need your help because it's an expensive process putting on a show like this because it's not just doing the scanning and the printing and the framing, I'm physically renting a gallery <laughs> to put the show in. So that takes up my you know, funds as well. But the other side is I don't really want to do it by myself. I only want to do it if Biggie fans want to see the pictures and want to do it with me. That makes sense? It's, uh, it's not, it's, uh, I don't want to be a guy sort of like printing all these pictures and standing on a street corner going, look at me, look at me. It's like, if you guys are interested, if there is interest in Biggie, then I'm here and I'm gonna share them with you and it's gonna be a hell of a party doing it. Um, well, it's just like, um, the, the same as today, I'm sure you get in touch with magazines, you get in touch with their art directors, the creative directors, you show them your work and uh, you, you, you act as enthusiastic as you can and you hope that they, they, you know, they get in touch and, and give you a job. Um, this, this particular story was uh, just scheduled to be a front of the book story, you know, a little news article right at the front. We shot this in the, in, in the summer of 94, but um, by the time it came out, um, Biggie had blown up so much it became a, it became a major feature. But uh, this was one of my first gigs in New York, so you know, when you come to a new city, it's kind of like starting out again. So you take everything you can. Um, mainly my feet, my focus at that time was fashion photography. Um, so this was, uh, I'd done a bit of music and I liked it, but um, it just, yeah, that's the way it worked out. But um, in, this, in this particular case, um, I'd shown my portfolio down at Interview Magazine and um, they, they called up and, um, you know, just basically it was a pretty low key job at that time. You know, it was just like a name and a name and an address where to meet the guy. Um, although the name stood out, you know, go to Brooklyn and photograph the Notorious B.I.G. And uh, I wasn't sure whether it was the Notorious Big or the Notorious B.I.G. I, I had to ask. And um, yeah, headed over to Brooklyn and, uh, and uh, to the location that was a recording studio where he was hanging out that day. And I met him there and then we went out onto the streets and did the pictures. Um, I remember when I first uh, arrived going into the, uh, the recording studio, there was a bunch of people hanging out outside in the street. It was very crowded. And um, LL Cool J came towards me, and uh, he was, uh, "Can I help you?" And uh, I just remember thinking, "This dude's really cool." I mean, I knew him from going back to Cali. I had a couple of his 12-inch singles of, of that um, classic video and uh, classic song. So I knew him, but he came up, and I thought, "Man, that name really fits," because he just had a really kind of calm aura about him. So I told him I was there to photograph uh, Biggie, and he pointed him out which, uh, as, as I write, wasn't that necessary because he, he was like six foot four. He was a big guy in uh, every way. Um, so that's, that, that was how the shoot started. We went out in the street. Um, he wasn't a big talkative guy. He was, uh, he, was, uh, he was softly spoken, deep voice, but soft, quiet. So you have to kind of lean in a little bit, which um, always surprises people when I tell them that. Um, and I thought he was shy. I didn't necessarily think he was shy at the time, I thought he was just, I don't know, it could have been mistaken as a little bit standoffish. 
Um, but as I, as I've as I've thought about it and, and, and remembered it, I definitely that's that's the conclusion I've come to, and, and I think I've, that's been backed up by other people I've spoken to since who know him. That uh, that he was a shy shy guy. I chose his words carefully. I did not see Diddy there. Um, the only guys I recognised was uh, was uh, LL Cool J and uh, Buster Rhymes. He was there. Um, well, we were shooting back then. We were shooting a film called Polaroid Type Six Six Five, which gives you a positive like a little Polaroid image and then you can peel that off and then you got a negative you keep that in water to clean it up and you can use that later to make prints which is what they're made from so I'd show them the Polaroid they take about a minute to develop so you kind of standing there making small talk peel it off and I'd show him the Polaroids and he was very interested in that he'd look at that and, and so there's like this one there's two or three images quite similar to this um, where you know, we've done it he's looked at the Polaroid and he's kind of redone it and tried something new slight like variation so you know, there was the sense that he was, you know, taking it very professionally, like, uh, like sort of trying to make it good, trying to trying to get an image that, you know, that he felt represented him. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, I got a theory because eventually, when I did find them last year, it was when I was moving apartment, and they were inside a pocket of an old jacket. And um, my theory is that when I printed them, I printed them myself. I rented a dark room and printed them is that I put them in the jacket, put the jacket in the cupboard. It was a nice jacket, but it, it had a stain on the sleeve. And I knew it had a stain and I kept thinking I should either, I don't know, have the jacket, it was rust colored, have it dyed black or something like that. Um, but it was also an expensive jacket and so I didn't want to throw it out, but I didn't want to wear it because of the stain. I think the stain was probably from the developer or the fixer, from the processing process. So the two things are connected there. I've taken it home, put the jacket in the cupboard, and just sat there. I, I lived in the same apartment for over 20 years down in Chelsea, in Manhattan. And so it was when we were moving last, uh, last April, a year last April, um, that, I, that I found the negatives again. So um, that was good. There's uh, 14 unseen ones, 14 plus this one, so 15 in total. Because this one was the one that was printed in interview. So I got, I got 14 other images. And you know, some full length, some cropped. Um, some different expressions, some different motions. Uh, yeah, they, they, they kind of all, um, I guess there's about three different sets, three different scenarios where we tried different things. And then I got this really great picture. He, he had an attache case with him um, with a, a big printed uh, decal on it that said the Notorious B.I.G. And, and there was a set of handcuffs. Uh, and he was carrying that around. And I got this kind of really nice still life of that, of that, that, uh, that, that case he was carrying around. I don't know what was in it. Nobody knows. We're going to find out maybe. Maybe I'll speak to LL and ask him. Do you have an idea? No idea. No. But I, I, I've told people about the suitcase and that's what they always say. Hey, what was in the suitcase? You know? Was he packing? Was it whatever? I doubt it. I think it was just a promotional gig, you know, like, a, like an idea to get attention. Me finding these pictures, right? Finding out, well, of course I knew what a megastar had become over the past 20 years. But I spent an hour and a half with them. I really didn't get to know him in an hour and a half. It was, it was a, a fleeting exchange. And um, you look back and you say, shit, I sat around with this guy. Well, I walked around with this guy and I didn't get to know him. I didn't ask enough questions. And he goes on, becomes a megastar. So I'm actually meeting people and I'm learning more about Biggie now than I did back then. So I'm sort of filling in the blanks. And, uh, and for me, that personally, that's kind of like uh, interesting and uh, it funds the wrong word, but it feels like I'm making up for lost time or something. With my music, you know, I think what I really want to just express and show forth is, is just reality. You know what I'm saying? I want to I want to put forth reality. You know, it, I think it's a time that's needed where it's like a person uh, can honestly just tell the truth about himself. He's not expecting any Oscars and Emmys because people go, uh, these guys can't act. And I said, but none of us are actors. We came into this knowing that we never acted before. But you have to understand that when we decided to do the project, I knew that we were weak. We were weak, weak in production because I've never stepped foot behind a camera. Um, we were weak in, in editing. I've never edited before. 